Good evening, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my wow. This is Pharmacist Divine, and today I have something I want to show you. You know, most people have been asking, you know, some people uh, 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 do it in a somehow different ways, there are different variations of how to consider with regard to reconstitution and administration of aphotericin B. So I want to show you an easier way to understand whether it could be a nurse, a pharmacist on the ward, or doctor I want to know how much fluid, what's the quantity, what's the volume for the patient that you should use. This is going to be easy for you. So what I'm talking about in this session is uh, amphotericin B. conventional type. This is conversion uh, type of Ampho B and in this case I'll be talking about Dioxcolate. So Dioxcolate reconstitution. How do you reconstitute Amphotericin B Dioxcolate? Alright. First of all, what you need to understand that this drug comes of course in lyophilized form which of course a powder form. Uh, what first step happens of course usually what we have comes in of 50, 50 milligrams, okay? It comes in as a valve of 50 milligrams, which of course this is a lyophilized form, okay? So first step, what you do is basically you get your normal, I mean, not normal, of course, you get your water for injection, 10 mils of course, you add into the valve, okay? That contains the amphotericin B. This must be shaken until it mixes uniformly. When you have made that first step, now you have to determine what will be the final because amphotericin B, you must use dextrose. So sugar is the best compatible medium of administration of amphotericin B. You don't use any electrolytes containing fluids. All right? This includes Ringer's lactate, sodium chloride, normal, normal saline, half strength normal saline. Uh, DNS, all those fluids I'm listed, or DAROS, these contains electrolytes. When you mix with amphotericin B, these electrolytes, of course, do react with amphotericin drug, forming some what we call precipitants, and that re renders the drug ineffective and forming crystals. And the administration of such crystals to a patient may even trigger hemolysis anemia in a patient. One, you are giving a useless drug, second, you might just cause problems in the patient. Are you getting? That's why we don't use electrolytes containing fluids with regard to administration and reconstitution of amphotericin B. So, after you've done this stage here, how much fluids are you going to use? What are you going to do? So, next step is very important now. So, in this case, we have to determine how much fluids we're going to use for the patient. So, what you need to know here is simply the final concentration after reconstituting what you when further dilution. So the further dilution final concentration should not exceed 0 0.1 milligram per meal. This is very important that when we further dilute, we should make arriving at this concentration. Too much, don't exceed this or don't, of course, or do below that. Because if you over dilute the drug, is you simply rendering the drug in effective levels, of course, and in this case, we're trying to treat maybe CNS infections. So you don't over dilute the drug and also don't under dilute the drug because you might cause more toxicity to the cells, of course. So that's a very important concern. That's why there's what you call uh, range and recommended concentration that you have to be aiming at. So I'm going to show you a very easier formula that you have to take into account. Easy formula. To, al to, arrive at, to, to, to arrive here at the final volume that you need to use for the patient. So remember that we're going to use this case, what we recommend is dextrose. Uh, so this case, of course, dextrose 5%. Okay? Of course, sometimes 10 can be used, okay? but preferably, of course, 5% is what is more recommended. I won't go into details to explain why uh, 5% is, is preferred. Alright, so what you're going to do now is that the total fluid that you need, the quantity, the volume of the fluid that you need for the patient, in the, this case, dextrose, quantity is equal to the dose of the drug that the patient requires divided by the concentration. This is called reconstitutional concentration, which of course is always constant for dioxcolate. For dioxcolate is 0 0.1 milligram per meal, so that's going to be coming down here. For instance, let's assume that our patient 
requires 50 mg dose of, of amortacin B once a day. So you're going to just infuse your thing here. You're going to simply put quantity of which is a volume, what you're looking for, of dextrose 5% is equal to the dose is 50 mg for a patient. That's 50 mg. You divide by simply the concentration, which is 0.1 mg per meal. Okay, remember that the milligrams and milligrams will cancel each other, remaining with the volume, which is of course in meals. When you divide that, you get of course your 500 one, 500 meals of dextrose 5%. So that means that if a patient is receiving 50 milligram dose of amphotericin B deoxycholate, the total fluid supposed to use is dextrose 5%, 500 meals. This is very important. This is very important. Don't over dilute or don't under dilute the drug. Okay? So this is how you can ar arrive at this uh, quantity volume at any time for the patient. This formula works for any drug. As long as you know the target concentration for that drug, we come to target reconstitution concentration. That's what I'm talking about here. Okay? That's when you understand that it becomes easier for you to follow this step and do the same for other things. Alright? Uh, so meaning that if... If, if this is the total volume, of course, so in a case, if you want to take into account the 10 mils, because we already made 10 mils here. So if you have got a, a, an IV bag that contains dextrose, of course, by 500 mils, you can just get an injection, a nurse may just draw, you can draw 10 mils off that. You can get 10 mils, 10 mils off that. So you can get 10 mils if you, if you have, um, if you have, um, we already have made a 10 mil from this presentation, all right? That's what we've made from this aspect. So what you can do that from that 5% dextrose, which contains 500, uh, 500 mils of D5, you can simply withdraw 10 mils and replace with the 10 mils of a drug, thereby maintaining the 500 mils concentration of the D5 drug.